Okay, so uh, now I want to take you through a quick proof of this uh, convergence theorem. And um, what will, you know, the proof is useful. It's a proof that's not terribly insightful because it's one that's going to leverage a lot of results in, in mathematics and uh, not be a direct constructive proof. Um, you can do a direct constructive proof, which is a little bit more involved. And uh, I, let, let me talk through some of the intuitions behind this before I go into the, the mathematical proof. And, um, you know, one, one thing that, that, that's true is, is uh, you know, if, if you've got periodicity, it's going to be easy to construct some examples where things blink on, on and off so you won't get convergence. So periodicity, aperiodicity is going to be necessary con for convergence. And then the idea is with, with aperiodicity, um, one thing you can show is that then the matrix actually eventually everybody is going to be incorporating information from every other person. And, and um, once you start doing that, then the idea is that effectively each individual, you know, the, the person who has the lowest belief is always going to have to be coming up over time, right? So they're weighting other beliefs and indirectly weighting everybody and the person with the highest belief is going to be dragged down over time. And so those things are going to have to come towards each other and they're going to actually converge. And so once you've got a periodicity, then you get this reach which eventually is going to start dragging things towards each other and uh, eventually things will converge. Now what they converge to, um, the fact that, uh, that everybody's going to have to be moving towards the, the middle means that each row is going to have to actually converge to the same thing. So everybody's going to have to have the same belief over time. And then whatever that row of the T matrix raised to some power starts converging to, it's going to have to be the same thing for each individual. And we'll see that that, in fact, is going to have to be an eigenvector in order for that to still be something which when you multiply it by the matrix, gives back the same uh, belief. So if you're going to converge to something, it's going to have to be that those things are unit eigenvectors. And uh, so um, that's the, the sort of high level intuition behind that. Um, and we'll go through the proof and, and, you know, playing with these things over time, there's a lot of intuition behind these and, and that you'll begin to see how they, how, how they operate. Okay, so now a more formal proof. Um, so remember the theorem said that if we, so we're, we're dealing with a strongly connected uh, trust matrix um, and we'll say that this thing is convergent if and only if it's aperiodic and then moreover um, we also get convergence then if and only if the limit looks like uh, the, each row is uh, um, based on the eigenvector uh, which is the left hand side unit eigenvector that has eigenvalue 1. Okay, so what's the proof of this? Um, first of all, let's say that a matrix is primitive if when you raise it to a high enough power, eventually all the entries are a zero. Okay, so there'll be some time after which when you've raised it to, to, to some power, all entries are, are non-zero, and then if you just keep raising it to powers, once you've got all entries non-zero, um, and each row is summing to one, it's going to stay uh, non, uh, a positive uh, forever after. So a matrix primi is primitive if and only if um, you get uh, positive entries after some time. Okay, um, so one thing that you can show, and, and there's a number of different uh, ways you can show this. This goes back in linear algebra quite a ways. Um, so Perkins 61 will give you one proof of this. But uh, if you've got something strongly connected and stochastic, then it's aperiodic if and only if it's primitive. So primitive is equivalent to aperiodicity here. Um, basically, if it's periodic, then things aren't going to always be uh, all entries zero. They can blink on and off. If, they, if it's uh, um, aperiodic, then after some time period, basically all the entries are going to become uh, positive and you end up with a primitive matrix. Okay, so that's useful. And the second part um, then says that, uh, and, and you can see a, a different sources on this, if you've got something which is strongly connected and it's a primitive matrix, so once we've gotten something that's primitive, then if we look at the limit of this thing in a stochastic matrix, the limit is going to look like the, uh, um, uh, every entry, uh, each row is just eventually taking on the values of this eigenvector S1 through Sn, 
Okay, so everybody is effectively, when we think about what the initial beliefs were, the beliefs at time zero, um, basically everybody's going to be taking the uh, eigenvector and multiplying that times those beliefs to get their beliefs. Okay, and, and you can get that theorem out of Meyer. So what this does is say, if you've got uh, um, a periodicity, you get that that's equivalent to primitive in, in this setting. Um, and then primitive gives you the left-hand side eigenvector as the uh, as the convergence. So strongly connected and aperiodic implies convergence, and um, the converse is going to come from showing that if we've got uh, T being strongly connected, stochastic, and convergent, um, then it's got to be primitive. Okay. So um, what we want to show then is this just, you know, making sure we get the, this converse part. So if, if we've got something strongly connected and stochastic and convergent, then it has to be primitive. So what we showed is aperiodicity gives you primitive, gives you convergence and the limit. Now we want to show if it's convergent, then it in fact has to be primitive, which in this world is equivalent to aperiodicity, and that um, completes the circle of the theorem. Okay. So let's, uh, let's look at convergence. So if you're getting convergence, there's something that this matrix eventually converges to. Let's call it S. So we've got this S, big S matrix, which we're getting it converged to. So that means that S times T um, has to be equal to the limit of T to the T times T, right? If this is the limit, and then we just multiply it times T one more time, that would be the same limit. So that has to be giving us back S, okay? So that tells us that S times T has to be equal to S. Whatever this limit looks like, this limited matrix has to actually look like a uh, matrix full of eigenvectors because when you're multiplying this matrix times T, it's going to give you back the same matrix. So that tells us that every row of S, when you take a row here, it's like a vector multiplying T, you're getting back the same row. So every row of S is an, a left-hand side eigenvector, and in fact it has eigenvalue 1, so we're not moving this s up and down, it's coming back directly as s, so it's scaled exactly with an eigenvalue of 1. So if you have something like this, um, then uh, the Perron Frobenius theorem, um, an eigenvector of an irreducible non-negative matrix is strictly positive if and only if it's associated with the largest eigenvalue. And this vector is unique in the case where the matrix is primitive. Okay. So since S is all positive, we end up with T being primitive. And then when T is primitive, then the Perron Frobenius theorem tells us the eigenvector is unique. And so all rows of S are exactly the same S, which was the S that we were working with before, which is the left hand side unit eigenvector. So Perron Frobenius tells us that we basically get a unique uh, eigenvector. And um, in, in this case, we're getting uh, uh, the, um, the one with the largest eigenvalue of, of one. Uh, okay, so that uh, uh, wraps up the, the proof here. Um, what, is, what do we learn from this? Basically, convergence equivalent to aperiodicity. Aperiodicity uh, gives us primitive. That also gives us the, the convergence, so we know exactly what we're converging to, which is uh, the eigen, left-hand side eigenvalue. Um, nice thing is aperiodicity is very easy to satisfy in this world. So as long as you just had one person rate him or her herself, so if anybody puts weight on themselves, then you've automatically got a cycle of length one. And once you have a cycle of length one, then the greatest common divisor of all the cycles has to be one. Right? So as long as we've got strongly connected um, aperiodicity, as long as anybody's putting weight on themselves, you're, you're, you're done. The only way we're going to end up with um, with situations where we don't have convergence is that nobody puts weight on themselves and then we have all cycles being multiples of, of some uh, cycle length of at least two. And uh, so if, if we have, you know, just person one uh, weighting themselves or at least one, one set of people that listen to each other plus one that involves a triple, um, that would be enough to have a greatest common divisor of, of length uh, one. So it's going to be very easy to satisfy a periodicity, and, and generically, in some sense, it's going to be uh, the, the true case. 
Okay, so what do we find? Um, we've got, uh, you know, when is there convergence and uh, the, giving convergence actually gives us a consensus. Everybody converges to the same thing. Um, that also told us a little bit about the influence because we're getting this S vector out. So it's uh, previewing a lot of what's going to happen in influence. Um, if you want to figure out the full details of this, there's actually a paper by myself and Ben Golub in 2010, which gives more general details on this kind of uh, convergence in this model. Um, but we can ask now then, uh, you know, who has influence? What can we say about influence? When is the consensus accurate? These kinds of things as well.